Hi, this is Tim. Welcome to our PLC Programming Methods to Sequence Machine series. In this series, we're going to be simulating a machine with some basic buttons and lights. It's going to start with the green light on, and when we press the green button, the yellow light's going to come on. We press the yellow button, the red light's going to come on. Just to add a little bit of variability, pressing the red button won't make it go to the next step, but we need to press and hold it for one second, and then the blue light will come on. And finally, pressing the blue button will start the process all over. While this is a really simple thing we're doing here, this can easily be scaled to any machine. And the best part about the methods we're showing here is they are compatible with all Allen Bradley PLCs. From the Control Logics and Compact Logics for Studio 5000, formerly RS Logics 500, to RS Logics 500 for the MicroLogics and the Slick 500, and even the Connected Components Workbench for the Micro 800 PLC. Actually, these are probably compatible with most brands of PLCs because they use basic programming fundamentals. Now, I'm not a fan of all these methods, but you will run into them out of the field. And I debated what order to put these in, and I decided to put them from the one I'm most likely to do, to the one I am the least likely to do. And that doesn't mean the ones on the tail end are necessarily the worst. They're just the ones, in my opinion, that I wouldn't use to program. So in this one, we're gonna use a basic integer and an equal statement to determine what step we're in and a move statement to move it to the next step. Also note that this footage was extracted from a live stream, so it may not be perfect. Now let's go to the final one. And this, if I'm doing something today, this actually probably is the way I do it. It's real school. Actually, let's start fresh. Let's go ahead and create one more program here. And this one will be, let's, what am I even calling this? Sequence move. Yeah, I'll just call it a sequence move. That'll work. And what we're going to create, well, first, yeah, let me get through all this before I, while well, it's fresh from my mind, let me select a controller and get my Ethernet settings in. Uh, it's going to be 192, 168, 114, 255, 250. And then, yeah, there was a subnet. That's why it hasn't been matching up the other times. There we go. But if we go over here, this is what we're going to be doing this time. And overall, I think this is kind of almost like the counter method, but it adds a little flexibility. And, you know, as you get doing this more, you find that you rarely make the perfect sequence or the perfect machine program off the bat. It takes a lot of modifications. And what I like about this version is it allows for modifications. So first... It's just a basic decimal number. So if the number equals, in this case, 10, and we press the green button, it's going to move 20 in. And here, 20, press the yellow button, it's going to move 30 in. So it's stepping it up, but it easily, allow, it easily allows that, let's say I decide I needed something between the yellow button and the red button. Well, I can make it step 25. So that's what I like about doing this, is when you can kind of spread it out a little bit, and I think it's still easy to follow. So let's do this one. So we're going to make a sequence number. And yeah, the same thing. So let's go make a few variables. Actually, we need to create a few programs. So, whoops. A new ladder program. Um, and actually, yeah, we're creating two of them. Okay, and this one will be sequence, and this one will be outputs, and then we're going to create a few variables. All right, so output zero is still going to be the exact same it's been the whole time. Green, actually, well, we finally got it labeled right, green light yellow light, red light, and blue light. And then our inputs are going to be the green button, the yellow button, the red button, and the blue button. 
And then we're going to add, same thing as last time, we're going to have a sequence number. Well, if I can spell sequence, you can tell the stream is coming to an end when all of a sudden, yeah, I definitely am not spelling very well. <laughs> that. All right. And we'll bring down an instruction block, and this will be an EQU. And we're going to be looking at the sequence number to B10. And then we're going to look for the green button. So green button. And if that's true, then we're going to use a move instruction, move V. And we're going to move a value of 20 to the sequence number. And now we're going to copy and paste that. And in this case, if it equals 20, and we see the yellow button, then we're going to move 30 to it. And then if we see 30 and the red button, now we got to have that one second in there though, so we're going to need a branch here. Before I forget, that needs to be 40. And we're going to bring another instruction down. This will be a timer. And this will be our red button delay. And then we bring down that and look at the Q button. Our Q, you know what I mean, the Q thingy. And so John doesn't have to find it for me next time. We're going to put T number 1S there. And then we're going to have one final one. This one will be a little, actually, it's not even going to be different enough to matter. So we're going to copy and paste this. So actually, we'll copy this one that doesn't have the timer in it. Paste it here. Whoops, paste it in the wrong place. And then if it equals 40. And we select the blue. In this case, we're going to put 10 back into it. And that's going to be how we cycle back through this. So now we're going to need to put our outputs in. And we'll bring this down. EQU. And that'll equal 10. Oops, I don't know how I got that down there. Take that out, put that in. And we'll need a green light. So 10, 20 is going to be the yellow light. 30 is going to be a red light, and finally, oops, 40 is going to be the blue light. Do you see the sheet? And all right, that's it. And guys, we are winding down here. Let's see how this one works. Our final one, and yeah, that definitely has a problem because my green light's not on. What did I miss? Green light, sequence number equals zero. Oops, what did I do up here? Did I take it back to 10? Ah, uh, I forgot. So there's two equals here. Did I do that? Let me see how I did this. Ah, uh, yeah. I forgot there's a bottom equals that if it's equal to zero, move 10 into it. And I have forgotten that. So last time, I think, actually no, because I'm going to show you a couple other things of why. Oops. Man, that's, that's another time all of a sudden we lost connection to the controller. No. We were going offline anyway, so hopefully it doesn't cause us a hitch. But we need a branch around that, and we're going to copy this, and we'll put it right there. Oops. Well, 
there. That equals zero. And download. All right, so we still don't have a green light. Oh, wait, we're not downloaded yet. Okay. Now, oh, bad when you say now and um, you still don't have a green light. So I've done something wrong. Move 10. Oh, okay, copy and paste errors. Um, all right, this is only going to be an issue one time, so I am, no, I can't shortcut it. Man, guys, as much as I want to be done with this, this blue button should have been over here. So we're going to disconnect one more time. And, you know, that's why you got to take your time and make sure it's right. And yeah, I know I could use online edits, but a lot of you don't have, the, you know, a lot of you are using the free version, so I don't want to see you, I don't want to do anything that you can't do. So, all right, we'll try this again. And hopefully this time, I'm going to hit the run button. Ah, we got a green light. Okay, so this one should work the same. Press the green button, yellow light comes on, press the yellow button. Red light comes on, press the red button. Doesn't work. Got to hold it for one second. Blue light comes on, press the blue button, and bam, we're back at the green light. Now, why do I like this one so much? So let's take just a few more minutes just to talk about it is mainly what happens on the others like let's just pull one of them up we got a few of them still open like the bit shift left here even if all of a sudden i need to squeeze something in here so i need to take and make dot one do something else i've got to change this to dot two and i got to change this to dot three and i got to change this to dot four and i got to do the same thing everywhere that every one of these is used i'll have to change it now on this it's not a big deal because we made a small program but it's still going to be a tremendous amount of work whereas on this one let's say that oh what i want to say let's say we want an intermediate step that required because we do have switch one we haven't used that requires that switch one be turned. So where I'm gonna put it, actually I'm gonna put it between the yellow and the red ones. So here's the yellow and here is the red. So later on we decide that we need switch one to be switched for this to happen. So I can go and just copy this wrong, make sure I'm on the right one. And now I can put 25 here. And I can change this to 25. And I have just inserted something in the middle of my sequence. Now I can select, was eight switch one? Well, what's seven? If seven is, yeah, seven is a blue button, eight is switch one. But yeah, let's take a moment. It should have a description on it. And so, yeah, right there, we're going to be switch one. Oops, I want to spell that right over the last switch one. And that's the one we're going to do. So now we can step through. But also, let's, let's talk about how we would add it on the outputs because we, we've only had one condition. Let's just make it where during that step. So during step, this new step 25, what do we want to do? 25 will make all the lights turn on. How about that? So we go to our outputs, and right now, if it's equal to 10, the green light comes on. So we're just going to copy this, and then we're going to bring a branch down, and we'll paste that right there, and this will be 25. So now, highlight that, and we also want it on the yellow light, so we're going to hit a branch on that. And then we're going to hit a branch on this one. And we're going to hit a branch on this one. And let's download this. So now let's talk about how this one works. So we have the green light. We press the green button and the yellow light comes on. Now we inserted something here though. So now when I press the yellow light, all the lights came on. And then, this still works exactly the same. 
Oh, wait, but what's our condition? So, okay, I mean, I know it now. and just jogged my memory, but let's go see if we can figure out why this wasn't run. Because before, I needed to do that next, and it doesn't work. And I said, what do we do? We sit here and keep pressing the button. Let's go in and make sure we can understand how to figure that out. So if we go here and we come back in, then we can look at our sequence number. And we can see, okay, we're at sequence number 25. And one, I can look right here at our outputs and see we're at sequence 25. But now I know I can go to my sequence program and I can look here and I can find where is it equal to 25. And okay, it's equal to 25 here and I'm waiting on switch one. So now I will go here and switch switch one and that takes us to our red light, which was our previous sequence. That still doesn't work unless we hold it for one second and then finally press the blue button and the green light comes back on, we start all over. So overall, this is absolutely the way that I think is the most versatile. I think it allows for a lot of flexibility. I think it makes it really easy for anyone, whatever brand PLC you're coming from, to understand. And also we're using really basic instructions here that every PLC supports. So this would be my choice, but hey, what would be your choice? So we, what do we go through? Let's just, well, let's go over here to our Studio 5000. We can look one last time what we went through. So we had our basic counter, and I say this would be my second choice. And it's funny, this is what I did in my first program, what, 25 some years ago. And then we had this hybrid counter, this other version of it, and I think I would use it if it was a more complicated one because mainly we can break it up. We don't have a bunch of branches. And then I would not use the sealant. I mean, this hasn't grown on me any. Uh, so I, I don't think that one's a good one. I would not use the latch one here. I would not use the bit shift left mainly because it's a very specific instruction to this brand. Uh, the move. I, that, uh, it's right up there too. It would be top, it would be number two or number three. I would not use this multiply. I think this is for people that are trying to brag about knowing how to do math. And then finally, yes, I believe this move is the most flexible one. And this probably is what I do, especially on something that I feel that we may end up needing to add some steps or modify. It just allows a lot of flexibility. So I hope this video has been helpful. Please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. Next, we're going to show you a few links, including the PLC programming methods to sequence machine series. Till next time. Hey, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.